Hey guys, this is Mariah Young, and I am actually doing this for my um, children's outreach for tomorrow, doing a couple of sample pages, but I'll show you some of the stuff that we're doing. So this is an art journal page. It's five by seven is the size that we're gonna do for our art journals. And so what you see here is foil with yarn under it like that. So that's the process that I'm starting. And that one's really, they turned out really cool. I really love them. Um, this one I did with like Elmer's bottled glue underneath. And what I found is that it actually doesn't dry quickly enough. So then when you're coloring this, we did this with Sharpie. It tends to um, get covered by the glue. And so then it's not as as great. It can actually ruin the Sharpie. So we're trying another method, which is actually working really good, <laughs> really well. Um, we are taking a glue stick and literally saturating it like crazy, like getting it really good on there. And then I already have some pieces of string that you just, you can lay down on, or you can, you know, you can lay them down on the bed of glue basically, and they'll stay. The other way that you can do it, which I did on this page is that you can actually just tape them to the back. That's what I did here. You can't see it, but, um, and that just created some nice straight lines, which looks just as cool, I think. Um, and so no glue underneath the tin foil. So there was no, um, interruption of the Sharpie pen. There was no, um, hurting the Sharpie pen or the marker ink coming out. So, and then you just tape the back of this. So I'm going to do my best to show you a little bit of how this is done. Oh, I got to show you Alex's. He's working on one too, because we're doing samples. His is really cool. Look at that. Superman. All right. So actually maybe what I'll do is I'll walk Alex through doing his so that I can video and get you guys a good video here. Um, so are you putting any more string on or are you nope, done? That's so it. he's got all his string on. He did, so did you glue it really well just mm -hmm. on the lines? See, he drew his out first, so he actually started with, work. yeah, you can kind of see a little bit of the glue still drying. So there you go. And then what we're using for this, I started out um, using tin foil that I actually cut up, but I remembered I had these for my salon hair dyeing. It's the just the sheets, so the 500 foil sheets. And so what he's going to do is he's actually going to go ahead and go ahead and lay it on, get it real good, and then turn it over. You don't actually need to do anything with it yet. Just turn it over. Okay. Now fold, fold over one of the sides. Yeah. And get it good and tight. And then just use some tape. I'm going to use this tape because I found that I didn't have clear tape, but hey, for video that works really well so you guys can see it. So he's just going to tape that down in a couple of places. And then we're only going to worry about one side at the moment, and he's going to turn it over. Here, we'll let him finish doing that. Okay, so go ahead and turn it over. And now is the fun part. So now he's just going to take his finger from one side to the other, rub it down. So go ahead and start rubbing it down real good. And you're going to see the shape. You don't want to get your nail in there as much as possible, which is good. So he's rubbing it down from one side all the way to the next. And you can see the shape starting to come through. And the reason you want to tape it down is because you don't want it to move. I had that happen on one of mine where I had already gotten all the lines kind of um, real well, what do you call it, embossed, I guess. It's defined. kind of embossing. Yeah, defined. And then it moved. <laughs> so I had to start all over again, which, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal because that was on my straight ones. I didn't have that much to do. But so you can see he is getting that all nice. And you don't have to get it perfect right now. You can get it just kind of so that it's um, kind of taut but it's not gonna be like perfect because the other thing that happens is when you're coloring it with the marker um, after you've gotten it taped down. So now go ahead and now that it's taut, let's keep it taut and go ahead and fold it, turn it over. I'm gonna go ahead and tape it. And as long as you've got that taped, we can do the other taping afterwards. So go ahead and give that a good tape so that it's, and give, yeah. And then you can go ahead and rub it again a little bit once you turn it back over and then start the coloring process. 
Yay, this is actually my favorite part. The coloring is just so cool. It really brings it to life. Okay, so now he's gonna turn it back over. There's Superman, the Superman emblem. So cool. All right, so now he's gonna pick his Sharpie. And I don't know what color. I'm guessing he's gonna go with the <laughs> traditional Superman colors, <laughs> red and blue. So let's see how he does this. So he's just gonna start coloring it in. And it's cool because what happens is the yarn creates a nice color in the line area, which is really cool. And you can do this on any size. By the way, we are doing this just on cardstock. So yeah, it can get a little bit flimsy, but once you put the tin foil on and reinforce it and it's, you know, you tape it down real taut, it actually gets pretty strong. Like these ones, this one right here is pretty strong. So this is what we're making again if you're just joining. And there, that one's, it's a little flimsy, but it's going to go into our art journal. We're going to actually um, poke holes in it. And the kids are making a journal page per week that we're going to do. So that'll be really fun. Um, and we got all different kinds of techniques. No, you're going to use, you're gonna use a Sharpie. This is kind of yellowish. It's that yellow. It doesn't, just do blue. Yeah. I'll do red and blue. There you go. Let's do I'll red and blue. Easy. Okay. So you're going to do red and blue. <laughs> so here he goes. He's going to start coloring in. I'm going to let you guys see that real well. And you don't want to Oops. push real tight as you just saw. You don't yeah. want to push down too hard. You really almost want to use the um, marker color as like paint. And you just let the lines guide, be your guide. It makes me think of Jiminy Cricket song. <laughs> Give a little whistle. <laughs> And always let your conscience be your guide. Okay, I know that's silly of me, but there you go. That's what comes to mind. So here you go. He's coloring it in. Oh, yeah, look at those colors coming through. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. It looks so good. Okay. Now, you guys probably want to see the... Um, yarn process. I can show you two ways to do that and actually probably what I'll do Alex if you don't mind is have you stop for a minute and just um, record me while I do a couple of techniques. So here's my mess. <laughs> okay so like I said there's this technique so basically I literally I'm going to go crazy with this glue stick. This is a Dollar Tree glue stick. They're not the best necessarily and I've already got pre-cut yarn so I'm just going to lay it on. And the nice thing, and I like it to close because then that kind of gives me defined places to color. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go here. Something that you can do is just kind of let the string be the guide if you wish. Or you can make it do what you want it to do. It's really up to you. And then give it a good push down before it dries. It's actually nice that it dries quickly because, um, like I said, if you have the glue, it's not uh, is not dry when you're coloring in with the Sharpie. The glue can tend to get onto your Sharpie marker, and then that ruins the marker a little bit. So, so there's that technique. And then the other technique that you can do, I'm going to show you with this piece of string, is you can turn it over and get a piece of tape. Again, I don't have clear, but that works for video land. <laughs> And just tape it down real good and it doesn't matter if it shows because you're gonna cover this with tin foil anyways and then get it real nice and taut and you almost could do foil on both sides if you use this technique which is kind of cool and but I'm just gonna give that a little cut because I don't want the extra and so that just makes a nice straight line without any glue. You didn't even need to use any glue there. So let me just finish up here real quick and I will also show you really fast the foil technique. Huh. So there we go. I'm just laying these on quickly. Okay. There we go. And I don't know. I'm going to go that direction. There. Okay. So again, same thing as Alex did. 
just going to, I guess I had him straighten his out on the front first, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead, fold that over. Again, if you want to show those foil sheets, the foil sheet box again, I'm using these foil sheets for hair. <laughs> I'm sure you could get them for other purposes. That just happens to be what we have it for when I used to highlight my hair a long time ago. I still have a ton of them because it comes with like 500. It's crazy. All right, so that's good and taped down. And then I'm just going to go from one side. So when you have a lot of string like I do, it's actually really good to go from one side to the other because you want to allow the tin to spread real well the tin foil and so again I'm not trying to get it perfect at this point I will do some more rubbing down you know before I color and stuff I'm just really wanting to allow the foil to spread real well and there you go you can see that under there Again, just gonna fold and tape. Not too stressed about it being perfect right now. I'm gonna go ahead and fold these down. I'm not gonna worry about the tape right now, just kind of bug me. So <laughs> and if you really want to get it really good, like this um, paper out or this foil, you can see it actually has the this pattern in it. If you rub it down real good with your finger, it actually kind of takes some of that pattern away, which is awesome. Because, I mean, it doesn't matter. It looks good either way. With the pattern or without, it doesn't really matter. So, you can get in real good with your finger. And that's going to give you an excellent space to color in. And so then you just, like I showed you with Alex... You get to cut, use the markers more as like a paint because you have your guides with the string underneath. So, pretty cool. Anyways, that is this project. I am actually going to be posting this onto my teacher's site so that they can see it. But I thought I would show everybody else as well because it's really a fun project. So, I am using for my colors... I think I might actually go with darker colors for this one, but I've been using these kind of pastel with a gold and a dark purple. But um, and that's kind of what I did these these ones with was with the there's the gold and the dark purple. Everything else like that's orange, but it doesn't look orange. So I might actually go with an actual orange this time, and then that one same colors. So. Maybe I'll try something a little bit different color-wise. But I think they turned out really cool, and I'm excited to see what the kids do with these. Oh my gosh, kids are just so creative, and they make things a million times better than I can even think of. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this project. And uh, if you make it, let me know. I'd love to see it. Um, also, I used cardstock for this. You could use cereal boxes, cardboard. You could do, um, you know, any kind of cardboard, foam core board, whatever. Um, and you can do any size too. This just happens to be the size we're doing because the art journal pages that we are doing are five by seven. Um, and we're gonna use cereal boxes to make the covers of those, but those will be a completely different post. All right, bye guys.